It's Sabbath school time, Sabbath school time. Glad you came to join us to hear about Jesus and His love. We're glad you came to join us. It's Sabbath school time, Sabbath school time. We're glad you came to join us to hear about Jesus and His love. We're glad you came to join us. Again, boys and girls, it is time for another online Sabbath school lesson. Now, if you missed any of the previous lessons, lesson one or two, be sure to check them out. But as usual, before we begin, we want to join in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, bless all the boys and girls and mommies and daddies and everyone who has come to listen to our online Sabbath school. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill us and we will have a wonderful time learning of you. Amen. It's now time for our song service. And as usual, I want you to lift your voices in praise to God and sing along with the songs. Hello boys and girls, 
I'm standing here by some Mexican sunflowers that we have growing. Right now, this sunflower is about to open up and bud and blossom and be beautiful. And how is that going to be possible? Because this sunflower has all the nutrients and the, the things that it needs to grow, like the nutrients from the soil, the fresh air, and it also has water. We even have a little shower just now, so the leaves of the sunflower are still wet. Now yesterday, the children picked a sunflower, and my daughter put it in this cup to save it. It was a lovely blossom, way bigger than this. It was beautiful and blossoming. So she put it in some water for it to grow. Well, not grow, rather. For it to remain so that she can enjoy the bloom of the sunflower. But her brother added something to the water. He added some essential oil to the water. And you can see exactly what happened to the sunflower. It wilted. Now this sunflower here, it doesn't look wilty. Even though the bloss the bloom has not come out as yet, it is still vibrant and, and this is because it has water in it. Whereas this one didn't have pure water, it had essential oil. This reminds me of something important. It tells me of our Savior. The Bible says that God is like water. Just like the plants and this flower cannot survive without water, we too cannot survive without Jesus. Jesus is the water of life. When the woman came to the well seeking to draw water out, Jesus said, you can come to me and I will give you water of life where a water that you don't have to continue to gather all the time, a water that you will not thirst again when you have it. The water that we have here, when we drink it, we get thirsty and we have to go back over and over and over again to get that water. We receive the water of life from Jesus. We are filled, our souls are filled, and we will grow and blossom spiritually like this flower but many times we try to get things added in when we think we have Jesus then we add in trying to do all sorts of things and it's like adding essential oil to the water and then what eventually happens just like this flower died we die spiritually God wants us to be alive and vibrant like this Mexican sunflower and as the day progresses this sunflower is going to blossom out and bloom and it's going to be very beautiful and as our time continues with Jesus our characters grow until we blossom and bloom and completely reflect him Jesus calls us to be perfect like he is perfect he wants us to blossom and bloom today it's now time for our devotion today our devotion will be looking at two texts in the bible the first text is John 17 3 and if you want you can get your Bibles and follow along John 17 3 and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent boys and girls did you hear what that text said that if we know God if we know Jesus who came to save us from our sins, we receive eternal life. So when we know God, boys and girls, we receive life. Now, if someone walks past our house every day and we see them every day, do we know them? No, we just see them. We might hear them speaking. 
We might recognize them, but do we really know them? No. We know them when we become friends with them, when we get to learn more about them, learn who they are, what they do, what they like. And boys and girls, it's the same thing with Jesus. We get to know him when we learn about him. We learn about who he is, what he's done for us and what he's doing for us. And our next text, John 3, 16, tells us that he did something so wonderful and magnificent for us. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Boys and girls, that text is telling us that Jesus was sent and not only was he sent, but he chose it because he wanted to come. Jesus came and he saved us from sin and he gave us eternal life. So those two texts are telling us that if we know Jesus, if we know God, we receive eternal life. When we know him, we trust him and we can rely upon him and we can depend upon him. Boys and girls, Jesus loved us and he came to save us from our sins and this is what we know about him we know that he is loving we know that he loves every single boy and girl and the bible says whosoever will any boy any girl any mommy any daddy any single person can know god and receive eternal life boys and girls today you can choose I can choose, everyone can choose to know our wonderful God who came and died to save us from sin.
girls it's now time for our mission story and inspired by the country that we are having our mission story from I decided to make my supper and I made a tortilla and my tortilla has in salsa roja um, frijoles negras and other delicious things tortillas salsa roja Frijoles negras. Hmm. I wonder what country we'll be studying this week. Hmm. If you said Mexico, you would be correct. Our story this week will be about a mother, a father, and their little baby boy. Now, mommy and daddy were so excited when they had found out they were expecting a baby boy. And when it came time for mommy to have the baby, they were even more excited. Soon mom had the baby, but when the doctors examined baby Abel, they realized that something was wrong. His stomach was not formed properly, and so baby Abel would not be able to digest his food, which at that time was milk. So Abel stayed in the hospital, but after a while, he was released. And for 15 days, Abel was with mom and dad. But soon, mommy and daddy noticed that Abel got extremely sick and they rushed him to the government hospital. And when they got there, a doctor came and said, I'm sorry. Your baby boy is extremely sick and he must get a surgery. So the doctor said the baby will get the surgery the next day. And he asked mom and dad, are you Christians? Mom and dad said yes. Well, the doctor said, you need to go home and pray. Only God can save your baby. And all night long, Mom and dad prayed and they prayed to God that God would save baby Abel. The next day, they went to the hospital and it was time for baby Abel to have his surgery to fix his stomach. The doctor came and he said, I want you to pray before this surgery happens because if I cut too much, he will die. If I cut too little, his stomach will not be fixed and he still will die. So mom and dad, please pray. And he left and went to have surgery on Abel. And all the while mom and dad were waiting, they were praying to Jesus to save their little boy. After some time, the doctor came out and said the surgery was successful. And mom and dad were so, so elated. But the doctor said, there is one thing I want you to remember. Tell the nurses that no one is to take out these stitches except for me. 
After about 10 days in hospital, it, it was time to take the stitches out. And the nurse came and she said, okay, I'm going to take the stitches out. Mom and dad said, oh no. The doctor said he was the only one that could take the stitches out. So the nurse asked, what is the name of the doctor so I can go and call him so he can take the stitches out? And dad said, Dr. Hernandez. <gasps> Dr. Hernandez? The nurse was absolutely stunned. Mom and dad asked, what's the matter? So the nurse said, but Dr. Hernandez does not work here anymore. Yes, he's the best surgeon there is, but he left to go to two cities away. He left two months ago. So if Dr. Hernandez didn't do the surgery, who performed the surgery on your baby Abel? At that instant, mom and dad began to shout and laugh. And the nurse asked, what's the matter? They said, Jesus, Jesus worked a miracle to save my baby. And the nurse was so shocked. It could only be a miracle because Dr. Hernandez was not there. So who performed the surgery? Jesus indeed had worked a miracle. And so the nurse removed baby Abel's stitches and Abel recovered wonderfully. Boys and girls, do you believe in miracles? I sure do. And I want you to remember above all that no matter the situation that we are facing, if it is a bad situation, a good situation, just as mom and dad did, did they prayed to Jesus and Jesus heard and answered their prayers. Boys and girls, Jesus can hear and answer your prayers. Sometimes he will work a miracle and other times he will not work a miracle, but Jesus will hear and answer your prayers and you can trust in him that he loves you and he listens to you. Hello children, it's Sabbath school time again. Time for our Sabbath school lesson. First, I'll review next week's lesson and then we'll start today's. Now next week, we'll be studying about young King Joash. And that story is taken from 2 Chronicles chapters 23 and 24. And your parents can also look up the story in the book Prophets and Kings, pages 215 to 216. And our memory verse comes from a familiar passage that I am sure you all know well. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Now for today's lesson. And before we start... We are going to bow in prayer and invite Jesus to be with us. Everyone kneel in prayer. Eyes closed, hands clasped. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this another opportunity of studying and learning lessons from your Bible. Let your Holy Spirit be right here. Bless all the children and their guardians as they listen and help them to learn the lessons well and to put them into practice in their daily lives. For Jesus' sake, amen. Our lesson today is called, When God Fights For You. Our memory verse comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 29. And it says, I hope you are learning these verses, and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. Let's go again. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. 
and it's called again when God fights for you now this is one of the my favorite stories in the Bible it's about King Jehoshaphat what's that word King Jehoshaphat he was the son of the king we learned about last week and what was last week's lesson about who was it about King Asa now King Jehoshaphat loved the Lord with all his heart and he worshiped him all his days he obeyed his commandments and he did like his father did at first. He went all through the kingdom of Judah and wherever he saw idols, he knocked them down. And the priests who used to lead people in worshiping the idols, he got rid of them as well. And because he led the people to obey God, there was peace in Judah and the people loved the king and brought lots of presents for him. He also had his sons and other Levites going all through Judah, teaching the people about God. And he walked so closely with God that the nation of Judah was going well and the nations all around admired them. But as usual, the devil doesn't like to see when this is happening. So he had some nations decide to go and fight against Judah. But just before that happened, King Jehoshaphat went across to Israel to visit with the king of Israel. And the king of Israel at that time was a man called King Ahab. King Ahab did not, love, did not love God. He was wicked and he married a wicked wife. You know what her name was? Jezebel. And she was so wicked that the Bible even spoke about her all the way down in the book of Revelation to depict evil. But King Jehoshaphat went to look and visit with King Ahab. And while there, King Ahab invited him to come and fight a war with him. Now, King Jehoshaphat didn't seem to be too convinced, but anyway, he went along with him. I was almost killed. God had to specially protect him. And soon he returned to his home in Judah. Now, remember it said some nations decided to come and fight against Judah now. And there were people coming from Moab and Ammon. Those people decided to gather up a great army to fight against King Jehoshaphat in Judah. Now, King Jehoshaphat had built up his city really well. All of the cities in Judah had strong forts and his army was well trained. But when he heard about this war, he did not say, oh, I have good armies so we are ready for them no 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 when he heard that they were coming to fight him he called a church service a special church service do you know what kind of church service it was it was a prayer and fast service do you know what fasting means it means that you do not eat you do not eat and when he called the service for Judah, the Bible says that all the men, all the women, all the children, and all the little ones came to the service. They did not leave the little children out, or they did not go to the church service and decide the children can stay outside and play, and we adults will go inside and worship and pray. No. Everybody was inside that service, all the babies, the children, and the youth. Everybody gathered, and King Jehoshaphat spoke to the people. And then he started to pray to God and ask God for help. And while he was doing that, a man, the Holy Spirit, came upon a man called Jehaziel. What's his name? Jehaziel and Jehaziel stood up 
And as the Spirit spoke through him, he said, Be not afraid, nor be dismayed, Judah. Do not worry about that mighty army that's coming against you. The battle is not yours. The battle is God's. So, you will not need to fight in this battle. You, all you have to do when you go to battle is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and what he will do for you. So King Jehoshaphat and the people, when they heard that, they were happy. And right there in the service, even before the battle was fought, they praised God and they sang and then they went home. Now the next day, the army came to fight, to get ready to line up and to go to the battlefield to fight. But not only the army, you know who else came? A choir. Have you ever heard about a choir going to fight an army? No, they do not fight battles. They sing special music in church or at a concert. But they went to battle and they lined up with the soldiers, not behind the soldiers. The choir was in front. And when they started to march, the choir started to sing. And they sang, praise the Lord, praise his name. And as they walked and the soldiers marched behind them, they sang all the praise songs they knew. Now the enemy heard what was happening and suddenly got afraid. And, and they looked around at each other and took up their swords and started killing one another. And some of the soldiers, when they saw what was happening, ran away. And by the time King Jehoshaphat and his army and his choir got to the battlefield, all dead bodies and a few soldiers running away. And they had nothing to do, just like what the prophet said the day before, you will not need to fight in this battle. When they saw what had happened, they were able to gather some of the treasures and they marched back home singing praises to Jehovah God. And they were so happy because God defeated their enemies for them. And all they had to do was to praise God. Now, that incident caused all the nations who heard about it to respect Judah to be afraid of them and not to fight them anymore. Now for question time, children. I hope you did your questions and your research because you needed to have read different parts of the Bible for the answers to some of these questions. Number one, who was Jehoshaphat's great grandfather? Who was Jehoshaphat's great grandfather? Now, I did something to help you work that out. So I want you to look. Look and see the names I have here. Now, you heard about King Rehoboam. You did not hear about Abijah, King Rehoboam's son, but that was his son. He was the next king. After him was his son, King Asa. And now we are at King Jehoshaphat. And the question is, who was the great grandfather? Now, Jehoshaphat's father was King Asa. Jehoshaphat's grandfather was Abijah. And Jehoshaphat's great grandfather was, you got it right, King Rehoboam. So his great grandfather was King Rehoboam. Next question, which wicked king did King Jehoshaphat fight with? That's right, King Ahab, and he was all for a rich nation. Israel, that's right. What was the capital city of Judah? It begins with J, just like Judah. Let's hear if you'd know that one. Jerusalem, very good. That was the capital of Judah. Now this question, this question, the answer wasn't in the lesson. 
but you should have researched it. Who was the father of Moab and Ammon? Lot. You remember Lot was Abraham's nephew. No. In whom did King Jehoshaphat put his trust when he heard about this war? In his army? In the strong cities that he built? He put his trust in God. That's right. What does the word courageous mean? Courageous means unafraid. But I want two B words from you. If you are unafraid, you are what? Brave. Very good. You are also what? Bold. Very good. That's what courageous means. Now, when the lesson said that King Jehoshaphat put his trust in God, it says that he was like some kings before him. Which kings before him put their trust in God as well? You would have heard about last week who it was. King Asa, he started out putting his trust in God. And then the, another king, King David. That's right. He also put his trust in God. Now, what strange thing did King Jehoshaphat call for when he heard that an army was coming to fight him? He called for a what? A church service. And what kind of church service? A prayer and a fast service. Very good. Now, this is the important lesson for this week. What important thing should you do when you pray to God to help you with a challenge or a problem? You have the challenge, you have a problem, and you pray. When you get up, what should you do? Just like King Jehoshaphat and his people, you should do what? Praise the Lord. Even before you see the answer to your prayer. You should pray. And you know some praise songs, children. There's one called Praise Him, Praise Him, All Ye Little Children. There's one called, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's another one, to God be the glory. So, when you pray, praise God too. So, children, this week, the important lesson I want you to take. Prayer and praise. Pray to God and praise Him. And when your parents or guardians forget, remind them to pray and praise God. He will fight for you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the story of King Jehoshaphat. We thank you for his faith and trust in you and for the lesson of praying and praising you. May all the little children learn from young to pray to you about everything and to praise you for their blessings. And may they be able to be witnesses to help their parents and others to pray to you and to praise you too. Bless them all and keep them continually every day of their lives. For Jesus' sake, amen. We've come to the end of another Sabbath school. It was such a wonderful opportunity to spend it with you today. Boys and girls, I hope you really enjoyed it as much as I did and as much as Andy Flo did. So, before we finish up, we will close off with prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the boys and girls and mummies and daddies and anyone who joined us today for our online Sabbath school. Continue to 
watch over us and protect us even in this pandemic protect us and keep us safe and help that all that we learn today will be written in our hearts help us to know you and love you and receive the gift of eternal life that you have promised for us this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye, goodbye to you. Goodbye, goodbye to you. Until another Sabbath, we say goodbye to you.